only rapper online and fire hazard. I don't hate this. I don't hate this. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us Friday morning, bright and early. We are Mark Rusinovich's opening act for his keynote later, so no one go anywhere. Definitely tune into that. Um, happy co-pilot day to all who celebrate. Yeah. OK, OK. All right, so how many of you have been slightly confused about the co-pilots? Can we get a raise of hands? So all of you, OK, that's cool. Um, Dan and I, actually, were very confused about the co-pilots. We're like, how many are there? What are they? What SKUs do they run on? What can you do with them? How do I get access? And originally, this session just started off as a conversation yep. between Dan and I, where we're like, should we do a dramatic reading of the co-pilots out loud and discuss what they do? And then he had the fantastic idea, like, why don't we write that down and tell others? We're like, why don't we write that down and tell others? And that's how this session came to be. I'm Donna Sarkar. I wrangle co-pilots at Microsoft. And my very responsible colleague. Dan Wallin. I'm with Cloud Advocacy and work on uh, AI across Microsoft Cloud. And I get to work with Donna a lot. So that's why we're here. Poor guy, right? Like, we feel sorry for this man. All right, so we've got a jam-packed agenda for you, demo-filled jam-packed agenda. And we're going to go through a few things that you all might have questions about. First, we're going to talk about all of the co-pilots, just the concept of adopting a co-pilot, extending a co-pilot, or building a co-pilot from scratch. You've heard about a lot of these concepts throughout the week, but we thought, let's put it together so it's not 18 different sessions, but everything in one place. Second thing we're going to talk about is when do you think about adopting a co-pilot versus extending versus building your own? That is probably the top question we get all the time. When do you build your own compared to extending? Third, we're going to dive into a few demos of co-pilots that you can adopt. And then I'm going to hand over to Dan. Yeah. Then we're, you're going to reach that point, right, where you're like, this is amazing. I can do this and this and this. And you know, a quick example on this, back when I was much younger, um, we built an open enrollment system for benefits enrollment completely from scratch. And one of the big things we had to do was try to figure out a help system. And I don't know if anyone remembers the little Merlin fly around or genie little thing. We literally built that in. It was kind of cool. But with Copilot functionality today, it would have made it so much better uh, for people to actually get the answers as they were rolling in the benefits. Because mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but it's like, where's that dang PDF at? Right, that part. That so part. that's what we're going to get into. So we'll talk, Donna, about mm -hmm. extending. Mm -hmm. um, and we have some cool demos here. We have some mm -hmm. special guests sitting. Mm -hmm. And we'll get to those in a moment. But um, you know, when do you actually do that where you want to take the out of the box, you want to enhance it? Versus, versus when do you want to go all the way and I just want to build something completely from scratch that I could host anywhere I want. And so that'll be our build section there. Right. And then we're going to close out with a very cool customer story by one of our customers at University of Surrey. We're going to talk about some trends. And it's us. So guess what? There's homework. homework. There's always homework. <laughs> all right. So the first thing we'd like to share with you is this beautiful graphic not made by me. This graphic is going to detail all of the co-pilots, not all, but some of the ways that you can adopt, extend, and build co-pilots. This graphic you're going to see many times because we want to ground you in where we're at during the session. I see what you did there. Don. You like that? You like the usage of the word ground? <laughs> um, we actually created a learn page to go along with this session, and we're going to share a URL with you. And you are going to see this graphic and that URL many, many times throughout your co-pilot experience. The second thing we're going to talk about is when you should adopt a co-pilot, extend a co-pilot, or build a co-pilot. And we're going to dig deep into each of these. And we're going to keep expanding on this table, because like we said, we're very early in the co-pilot journey. We're in year one. That means every single month, we're going to find out new information that we'd love to share with all of you in real time. So this session and our learn module, our learn page, is going to be living documents. So shall we start with adopt? We should. OK. I like, I like that. We can get a little like puppy and yeah. bring it home. Home, feed, feed it, it, water it, yeah. you know, take care of it, have someone babysit when you're not home. You know, That's the challenge. Adoption. <laughs> so originally, Dan had come up with this beautiful idea of adopting, extending, and building co-pilots. And it made so much sense, sense to us. We're like, because with adopting co-pilots, these are the things that are being announced every hour on the hour. Right? And I've talked to many of you about how many co-pilots there are in the company. Let's just say there are a lot. I usually play like a fun little auction game, but we'll be here all day counting these co-pilots. Just this week alone, you saw how many new co-pilot experiences being announced, right? Yesterday in the security one, it's like Intune, Entra, this, that. So there are a set of co-pilots that are 
very, very available to you and very useful right now. And some of them that we'd love for you to try out if you haven't yet are the Copilots in Dynamics 365, Copilot in Microsoft 365 that you've heard a lot about, the artist formerly known as Bing Chat Copilot, which is now called Microsoft Copilot, which we're gonna have a demo for you, the Copilots within Power Apps and Power Automate that we're gonna have a demo for you, the Copilot in Windows, that's actually free as part of the Windows Insider program. Any insiders in here? You got a few. I knew there'd All be right. insiders in here, insiders in every room. And then, of course, there's the GitHub Copilot, which is honestly my favorite. So these are the Copilots that you can adopt. And a big question we hear from people is, when should you think about just adopting a Copilot out of the box? And the answer is, like everything, it depends. But some of the, the signatures and markers are that you just don't have a lot of time to do development work. You need something that works out of the box for your enterprise within your own enterprise data. And this is very helpful if you've got most of your data within a Microsoft tenant of some sort. So within your AAD, within your M365, your data is already there, and that is the data you'd like to co-pilot over. You don't have too many external sources, third party, et cetera. So those are the good part. The less um, the more restrictive part is that you're not going to have a lot of control over the co-pilot. You're going to be not be able to say, what should the temperature be? Meaning, like, how variable do you want the output to be? You're not going to be able to really customize how long you want it to be, except for like long, short, medium. You can change a little bit of tone, a little bit of um, length, but you don't have that code level complexity to be able to adjust the co-pilot. But again, simple means you can get started faster. An example of this would be, and we just looked this up, which is look in M365 and just do a query and say, what flights do I have coming up in 2024? And if you know me, I've come around the world and seen most of you, it's a lot. <laughs> so I want to show you a demo of the artist formerly known as Bing Chat Enterprise that I still keep calling it, but now called Microsoft Copilot. I'm dyslexic, so that means that reading large quantities of text in documents is really, really hard for me. It takes way too long. So here's a nifty trick that I really recommend all of you try. Go to an internal SharePoint site. Here, we went to actually the site for the session. And you can just pull up Bing Chat via Microsoft Copilot from the widget, the flyout widget on the upper right corner. And make sure you're signed in to your tenant. You can tell that by just looking at like the top where it says signed in, signed out. Make sure you're in your work or school account. And once you're there, you can just point at the SharePoint just by bringing up the flyout, and you can ask Copilot to reason over whatever's in the SharePoint. I do this every day. I do this many, many times a day, because how often do you, rent, you know, stumble upon a SharePoint? You have no idea what's in these documents. And this is a really good way to get insight into what's in these documents, what's in these PowerPoints, who is the author, is this person, what kind of job does this person have, etc. Now, the funniest thing about this is that you suddenly are able to find out what's going on at scale within your own enterprise without doing anything. You don't need to buy M365. You don't need to connect it to anything. This is just something that works within your tenant. And of course, this enterprise search box on the side is really useful for just all sorts of things, drafting, blog posts, emails, et cetera, et cetera. So if you don't have M365 yet, this is a quick little workaround hack that I love to use. Which is awesome for summarizing awesome. and figuring out uh, yes. more details about it. So, you well, in addition me. to yeah. that, um, we can move on to the next one, and that is Microsoft 365. And this is one, I'd have to say GitHub Copilot I use a lot, but this one's really, really cool. If you haven't used it yet, don't have access yet, it's probably common for your mm -hmm. company, hopefully. Um, you'll see these prompt cards here. And so, Donna, I know, you know you've been working with this a lot, and so have I over the last year or so, but for people that are new to this, they can learn from that. And here's an example down below. Uh, how many times uh, have I met with Patrick over the last uh, two weeks, as an example? All right, now, some of this stuff you could just go keyword search on, and I don't know about you, but that doesn't always return what I want. Especially if you spell wrong, like I Especially do. Especially if mm -hmm. you can't type, that's a mm -hmm. minor detail there, but mm -hmm. Um, so this will come back in just a sec here, and we'll see, uh, okay, we had this adventures with GitHub. Now, turns out this was a meeting that we were both invited to, but it was one of those bigger ones. Um, and so as a result of that, I could dig in and get more details. But let's take Donna. Mm -hmm. We have very specific meetings, because we mm -hmm. meet, well, over the last two months, we've met like almost daily, it feels like. Mm -hmm. And I could say, go get me the meetings with Donna Sarkar Car over the AI plus Copilot type topics, um, which has been most of our meetings, to be honest. 
Um, and what this will do now is once it comes back, we can get to those meetings. But then what I love, and this is my favorite feature, is drilling down into, okay, what was actually shared during those meetings? Because I don't know about you, sometimes I lose track of where did I put that dang document? You know, was it over here, is it over here? Like I know I shared it. And so here's an example we're gonna kind of dive in now and say, all right, what documents did we share? Now, what's interesting here is our other meetings had the main documents. These, which I totally forgot about, mm -hmm. we had a loop document. Yep. And it, it turns out it was the agenda for this talk, actually. And uh, you'll see here that it kind of returns that right there. And now we could go in and get more details about that loop. And that's one of those things, again, that I was like, oh yeah, I totally forgot about that. Mm -hmm. um, because we moved on to slides and stuff like that. So that would be one use case with M365. Uh, you also have the, what you just showed, which mm -hmm. is awesome. Mm -hmm. But we have uh, some other cool stuff, right? That's right. So how many of you are forgetful? All of us, right? You know why? Because <laughs> we have data from everywhere. And when you forget things, I find Copilot to be really helpful. Like, where was that thing again? Who was I talking to, et cetera? The next demo, I love a lot. And April's going to show you my favorite part of this demo. April, you want to come on up? Um, right. April Dunham, everyone. All right, so I don't know how many people out there have used the Power Platform, but one of the things that I love about it is it's really user-friendly. So it's a low-code tool. It allows you to be able to quickly automate things, build apps, and all of that. Now, if that wasn't already good enough, we can easily automate things with, with just the tools as they are. We have Copilot now on top of that inside of Power Automate to make it even easier to start building automations. So an example of something that we might want to automate here with Power Automate is our employee satisfaction survey. So we have a survey out there. We ask a few things about their role, uh, age group, and then how satisfied they are with their employer and some additional information. Now, when we get this form, I want to be able to take that and put it in a database. So in our case, just a SharePoint list so that I can see all the summary of information, do some reporting off of that and all of that. And then it would be ideal if I could send a response back to the person, letting them know that we're thankful for their submission and all of that. So that's something that I might want to automate with Power Automate. And if I haven't used the tool before, I might have to go in and try to figure out where to click around and, and how to do that. Or I can just use Copilot and tell it what I want in natural language. Now I'm even going to actually use a prompt that we have from our prompt library here. So there's actually a Power Platform prompt library that you can go out to at aka.ms forward slash power platform dash prompts. And there's all kinds of examples of things that you can automate with Copilot in Power Automate, Power Apps, and all the different Power Platform tools. This particular one is going to tell Copilot to build a workflow that gets customer feedback from Microsoft Forms and adds that feedback to SharePoint. Then we want to send an email to the submitter and include text in the body that thanks them for submitting the feedback. So with this one prompt, I can go back into Power Automate, paste that in our Copilot window here, and click Generate. And with that, it's going to suggest a structure that will solve my needs and automate the process that I want. So there you go. We see that it has the trigger of when a response is submitted. It's going to get all of the details. It's going to add that to SharePoint, and it's going to send an email, exactly what I wanted it to do. So now if we click Next, we'll go and confirm the connectors that it's using for us, because the Power Platform has over 1,000 connectors in Power Automate that we can use. And it's going to authenticate into those so that we can log in and automate our process. So there you go. There's all of our connectors. We've got Forms, SharePoint, and Outlook. Now we'll actually create our flow. Now at this point, I can manually fill in some data. So if we click on any one of these actions, like we'll go to this trigger for when a new response is submitted, I can bind that to my employee satisfaction form. I can do the same thing here for getting the response details. So it's a really friendly interface. I can use some dynamic content. So this is actually a new editor experience that you may or may not have seen in Power Automate that rolled out recently. So much more user friendly. So we're gonna bind some of these properties. We'll do the same thing with SharePoint here. I want this to go in my Power Platform site and into a list that I have for employee satisfaction. And we'll do some data. So we're gonna bind the title column using our dynamic content as well to, let's see, we have a job title. So we can even search in dynamic content if you haven't looked at Power Automate before. And we'll bind that there. Now, some of the things that we'll look at here is in the email, I have thank you for your feedback, but that might not be what I want. 
if you'll notice on the right hand side, we have a co-pilot that is with us in the editor experience as well. So it doesn't just dump us off and leave us on our own. The co-pilot is there to help us. So I can ask it to do certain things like in the send an email subject, put thanks for your employee feedback submission. Then press enter. And the copilot will go take what I put in and fill in that information in the subject here. So if we look, it looks like it updated those particular actions. So we'll go to send an email. And there you go, that subject is filled in for us. So we can use this to not only fill in properties, we can have it add actions as well. Now, one thing that I want to show you that I think is really cool, if anyone's ever inherited a flow in Power Automate and you had to figure out what's wrong, maybe it's broke, you don't even know what it's doing, you can actually ask Copilot to help you with that. So I can say, what is this flow doing? And then there, there you go. It lets us know that this flow is triggered by Microsoft Forms and it gets response details, posts that in the SharePoint and sends an email. So it's really good for giving you that feedback of what you can do with it as long as well as building the flow itself. So if you haven't tried it, make sure to try Power Automate Copilot there to help building automations even faster. Um, first of all, is April not the best demoer on the planet? She's awesome. <laughs> Good, job. Good job. Um, and second, if you don't follow her YouTube channel, uh, you should, because she has tons and tons of very, very useful tips. Plus, she started a whole co-pilot session on all of the things you can do with Power Platform and co-pilot. So go like, hit, subscribe, smash the button, whatever you're supposed to be doing with <laughs> Okay, Dan, guess what? We have more. We, have, we got more. Yeah. yeah. If we stop there, that's great. I mean, that's all the out-of-the-box functionality, although, as April showed, you can customize quite a bit uh, right in Power Automate, for example. But um, we have some other things we're going to talk about here. So what happens when you reach that point where you're like, you know, I, I'd like the uh, out-of-the-box kind of off-the-shelf offering, Donna, but mm -hmm. what do you want to bring in? Right. Usually it starts with some sort of real-time third-party data, right? I tend to pull information from the thing formerly known as Twitter, which I won't call it here in this room, but that used to be my favorite thing, is having a Twitter feed on the side, just talking about your topic with a hashtag. Real-time data, right? That's yeah. really useful. Or you might have uh, some documents mm -hmm. that you wish those external documents uh, mm -hmm. could also be included. Mm -hmm. I talked about earlier, like, Maybe you already have some HR stuff within, you probably do, but let's say there's some external third party, uh, such as insurance companies and things, that you also want to pull in that gives more details. Well, we can do that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So let's talk through. Um, now, this one's going to be a little more effort, of course, because mm -hmm. this is out of the box, but we're going to uh, trick it out, if you will. We're going to customize it, extend it. So this is still going to run in your same tenant, all right, because you're still using the different copilot. But, Donna, we have some things from a developer standpoint we can mm -hmm. do, right? Right. And a low code standpoint. There's stuff from a dev point of view, a stuff from a low code dev point of view. But the main thing I feel you need is a good API, a good reliable yeah. API, right? And that is the advice that everybody is giving who's working on plugins right now, where if you want your product to be a plugin at some point into the Microsoft Copilot ecosystem, which you're going to want, make sure you have a really good public API that's well documented. And after that, you're going to have like a connector, a manifest, all of these things. All these things. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So that kind of represents the box on the left there. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you've ever done this with like ChatGPT, mm -hmm. um, there's an upcoming option but you're mm -hmm. going to be able to do something very similar there. But mm -hmm. some of you might have used uh, what we have in the middle there, Teams message extensions or Microsoft Graph connectors. And we're going to have a demo of uh, message extensions from Bob in just a moment. Mm -hmm. But what are we talking about here? You know, we know plugins is like yes. real-time data. Plugins is real-time data. We've got the connectors, we've got extensions, we've got connectors. And how many of you have used a Power Platform connector before? Okay, a bunch of you. That's bit. great. So you know Good. there's 1,200 of them, right? And <laughs> here's the thing. They will all continue to work with co-pilots. That is the point of the exercise. And as we introduce, say, plugins into the Microsoft Copilot family of co-pilots, I guess that's what we call it, Microsoft Copilot. Sounds good to me. Yeah. But all of the existing methods of doing extensibility will continue to work. So extensions will work, connectors will work, et cetera. And 
the same, the same kind of model, whether you're looking at real-time data or like static data, it comes from an external source to an in-box co-pilot. So do we want to show them? Um, I think we should. I think we should wanna, show them. All right. I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna skedaddle off and so hand off to So we're gonna Bob welcome my uh, big round of applause for my friend and colleague, Bob German. Come on up, Bob. Hi, everybody. I will hand you the honorary clicker. Ooh, the honorary clicker. Hey, everybody, how are you? So, you know, before, before I show you how to make a message extension into a uh, Copilot plugin, let me ask, how many of you know and have ever used a Teams message extension? So, yeah, let me just kind of do a quick review because I'll bet you've used it and maybe you didn't know what it was called, right? They're really, they're really very handy. So um, I'm actually gonna start by writing a message in Teams to my colleague, Rabia, who's sitting right over here, so I didn't really need to use Teams. But um, we're gonna have like kind of a chai uh, fest afterwards. We're gonna uh, get together with some friends. And, and so I wanna make sure we have enough inventory. And so I wanna ask her to check on the inventory. And you know, if you, normally I would, I would say the name of it. She'd have to go look it up in the product catalog. She'd have to go find it in the warehouse. But instead, with this message extension, I can actually go and actually do the query and send her the information. So I'll just type chai, and it'll actually go into, uh, anybody here ever heard of the Northwind database before? Yeah? So we're- Best one so ever is, invented, Bob. This is, li this is real code. Uh, this is an app, by the way, that, that I wrote with Rabia and our colleague, Larry, uh, Gary Trinder. And, um, and so this is real, real stuff, and, and the very first product in there is Chai. And you can see down at the bottom there's a little query, you can see the log. So there's also, I could search by, for discounted products and, and based on the revenue, but I'm gonna just do the Chai. And um, if I click this, you get this very nice little adaptive card. So now she knows exactly what it is we're looking for, and if she discovers that we're off by a few, so it's really 375 units in stock, um, she can actually just go in and take action on it from right here inside of this adaptive card and update the stock, and off we go, right? So very simple. So that's already there. The cool thing is that this becomes all by itself a Copilot plugin without any extra work, although we will enhance it to make it more effective. So before we do that, though, let's, let's just take a quick peek under the covers, shall we? That'd be awesome. So, um, this is the Teams app manifest. So it's a, it's a JSON file. It's just how Teams figures out what it is that we are, um, that the app does. It's how users figure it out, and it's also how Copilot figures it out. So there's all this information, and if you look at like the name and description, you'll see that um, Copilot's actually gonna use this to figure out whether it should call our plugin. And then Rabia wrote this amazing like description that's also going to be published as a short book, um, <laughs> and 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 this has all kinds of other detail about the uh, about the app that Copilot can use. So now uh, I scroll down to Compose Extensions, which is the historical name for Message Extension, and you'll see here this one works with a bot. So we're working on soon we'll have one that can directly call an API. Um, but in this case, we're gonna use the Azure bot service as just a secure real-time uh, communication channel with our app. And it does have some advantages. It's a little bit more work, but you know what? You can actually customize the code that way and, and massage the data if you need to on the way in and out of the, uh, of the API that you're calling, which in this case is a database query. And uh, you might notice under that, I've got an array of commands. So um, I'm gonna skip the first one with the inventory search, because that's a little bit fancier. So I'll save that for the end, and I'll take a look at the second one, which is a discount search. So we're gonna search for discounted products by category, and then there's one parameter, which is where the user types the category name. Or for instance, um, I can go into the revenue, and I can find products based on their revenue. And this blew me away, I have to say. I was kind of lazy, and I didn't really want to write the code to analyze all the different ways of doing a query, a numeric query based on a, a bunch of text. So in the description, I, I actually taught Copilot to either enter high, low, or to use this exact format. So somebody could ask their question in a different format, and Copilot, instead of me having to parse all the possible formats, Copilot will actually do that and pass into my app the correct um, format, which is really, really cool. Um, and then, 
we go up to the top one, um, this one is actually uh, a new capability that's come out, which is multiple parameters. So Teams and Outlook can run these message extensions, but they can't really handle more than just the one parameter, which is product name in this case. But here we've added the category name, inventory status, supplier city, and also a stock query so that you can actually um, kind of filter the data, refine the data, and get down to exactly the data you want. And Copilot will actually learn from all these description fields and figure out how to do it. So let's go ahead and check this out. Um, here I am in Microsoft 365 Copilot, and I'm just gonna ask it, uh, please find Northwind products with more than 50K revenue uh, and along with any ad campaigns that we've run for them. So it's actually gonna go, now the ad campaigns are not in the Northwind database, but it's gone and it's found the products, and you can see the query if you look carefully at the bottom at the log file. And then it went into SharePoint, and it went through each supplier or through each product and found the contract with our ad agency and was able to provide that information. And if I'm, if I'm not even sure about that, I can actually hover over these little references and get the information. How cool is that, right? I mean, wow. And, and so let's, let's try another one. This is too much fun, right? So I'm gonna type new chat, and this is a little tip for you using all these different co-pilots, and you may have seen this with ChatGPT, right? It, it understands the idea of keeping the context from turn to turn, meaning we're taking turns talking, but unlike, I live in Boston, so we always interrupt each other, but everywhere else in the world, people <laughs> take turns. Um, and so, yeah, so it, if you don't say new chat, it's gonna think we're still talking about high revenue products and ad campaigns. So it's a, just a nice way of saying, okay, new subject, right? So let's go ahead and I've been getting complaints that we're running low on stock with our dairy items. So I'm gonna say, uh, check the Northwind inventory for a dairy products low on stock. And I wanna see this as a table with a reference to each product so that I can just copy and paste this into uh, another, into an email. And so it did it, not only did it do it, but it figured out that of all the data in Northwind, that the units on order, the units in stock, and the reorder level were probably important since I'm asking about low inventory, which is very cool. And now, oh, quel scandale, we are running low on camel bear. What shall we do? <laughs> well, I know, I will take action from right here. So um, let's just go ahead in and I'll hover over the uh, action, the reference for camel bear and scroll down. And uh, so this is the same card that you saw before. This time I'm gonna restock and we'll order 50 more because we're gonna have a chai and camel bear pro uh, party later. And uh, I wanna make sure we have plenty of supplies. And there we go, we actually updated the data. So the other thing that's kind of on my mind at this point is, uh, you know, have we been having delivery problems? You know, I, I really like, why are we running low? And so um, I'm gonna ask Copilot to look into this. And um, so I'm just gonna say, okay, please write an email to the procurement team asking if we've had any delivery issues. And what I think is cool about this is it's multi-turn, right? It remembered my earlier prompt. It remembered the, the response. It, I, it had a list of products. It knows that products are supplied by suppliers. And it's gone in and worded this email to our procurement department about suppliers, not about products. So this, this is just, it keeps amazing me with the things that it can do. So having a lot of fun with this, and I will tell you that this demo is um, open source. So if you go to aka.ms slash ignite23 lab, you will find the lab that we ran here yesterday and the day before, hands-on lab, the whole thing is open source, the, the sample is there, and we have uh, several other samples of different kinds of um, Microsoft 365 message extensions that will work in Copilot. So really cool stuff. So, um, yeah, we were talking about this, Dan. Yeah. Uh, like there's, there's connectors and plugins and it might, like let's just put a really fine point on this, the, real, the difference. Yeah, because yours was real-time data, right? With the Northwind? It was. It was, and, and, and the way that a graph connector works is, is different. And just in case you're confused, this is a historical thing, right? Power platform connectors are plugins, right? And, and it's nobody's fault, it's because 
they were calling them connectors and we had thousands of them or over a thousand of them before the LLM thing even started to take yep. off. So um, it is what it is. So um, the graph connector actually ingests the data and pulls it into Microsoft 365. Now real quick, Bob, when you say data, are we talking like documents and things like that? It could be, but yep. it also could be something like my Northwind catalog. It's just that it's not gonna do a real-time query. It's gonna get put into what's called the semantic index. Yep. So that um, this also will light that data up in search inside of Microsoft 365, and it will give, uh, it'll sync it on a, you know, it's a whole little methodology for doing this. We've got some samples that, uh, on that as well. And, um, and so for instance, if I wanted to do a query like, uh, please suggest uh, beverages that would be good for holiday promotion, yeah. right? Um, my, my, my plugin wouldn't do it, right? Because there's no query for that. You saw what it can query. Right, you've got to kind of think just like any other app. You got to think about the user. What's the user going to ask, and then make sure that you provide the parameters and the queries so that it can do the real-time lookup. But maybe graph, you know, what? Because now everything's in the mind of the copilot. Well, and, and you have the semantic index. index you talked about. Right. So <clears throat> it could it can go in and do those other kinds of queries. So you kind of have to pick the one that's the most appropriate for your use case. Um, so, and some, something that somebody else kind of brought up is the prompt stays within the tenant. Um, actually, it stays within the tenant in both cases, but the, in the case of the plugin, the, the query is going to go out. So if somebody was logging in the Northwind, which they are actually, right, we would see that somebody looked up that data, right, so that's going out of my tenant. Right? Whereas once you ingest the stuff into your, your content, into the graph connector, it's, it stays in Vegas or in your in your tenant, assuming it's called <laughs> Vegas, right? So, anyway, so. Well, this is um, great, this is great. Uh, yeah. yeah, big round of so, applause So for lots Bob. of fun, yeah, thanks. <clears throat> Thank you so we'll much, turn that it back was awesome. Over to Dan. Yeah. Donna, it's been so long since Bob, we talked. Bob, so. Bob, wait, 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 stop, yeah, yeah, stop, yeah. stop, stop. So come here, come here. <laughs> I want everyone to witness what happens when you don't invite me to your camembert and chai party. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I did not hit him that hard. New nickname, Spike. This is my friend Spike. Yeah. <laughs> flesh wound. You're flesh wound. He did not know I was going to do that, just so you know. <laughs> Welcome to working with me, Dan. Yes, yeah, yes. I've only I'm accidentally learning. stabbed you I'm once learning. today. <laughs> yes. She has this social distancing thing I going. I know. Like, you know, because it's like, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we've talked about adopt. We've talked about extend. Who has a slightly better idea of extending options now? Hopefully, yeah, there's like many ways to do it. It's not just the one way. The third one, which is you know, the talk of the conference, which is build. How do you build your own co-pilot? And I will tell you probably the most important thing, Dan, is the data. Absolutely. Right? Yep. So. If you don't have data, it's gonna be, uh, well, probably a waste of your time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so what do you think in terms of the dev time? What, what do you, what's the scale? Well, I think it depends. So. With the option I'm going to show you, we're going to use one of the Azure AI uh, built-in mm -hmm. pieces, which it takes the new form. Again, we have all these formerly, you know, artists formerly known as mm -hmm. cognitive search, but we have a Azure AI search now. And uh, it has all the capabilities to do the rag pattern you've heard so much about. Um, so we combine that with some of the models in Azure OpenAI models. And we can do some pretty amazing things there. Mm -hmm. So I think it depends. Um, what I'm going to show you, there's a little bit of code, but it's minor. Yeah. Uh, but if you wanted complete control, like maybe Donna, you want to, uh, like the index and all the setup mm -hmm. and everything, you want to do all through code, yeah. you could do that too. So it, it just depends. I am a control freak, so this is legitly the option I would choose all the time. But that's not necessarily a good option, right? So if we're looking at that travel example again, for adopt a copilot, it would be bring me all the flights that are in my calendar. For extend a copilot, it would be connect to flight API for you know, some airlines that I fly a lot and pull in all of the flights available from Seattle to Amsterdam next week. For something like this, it would be build a custom employee travel portal for my business because none of the extend existing copilots would really do the job. So you would need like the HR database. You would probably need a bunch of flight connectors to all of the airlines or a connector to conquer thoughts and prayers, right? You would have something like this. But so, you can embed it wherever you want. You can embed it wherever you want. So that's so. the good news. And you all saw how to do it with um, Copilot Studio, yes, Copilot Studio, or Azure AI Studio. We're and still all learning the names too. We're all learning the names <laughs> in real time. 
Yeah, so with that, uh, let me show you a quick demo of kind of what we were talking about here. And uh, this is just, it's a demo app. And the goal here was pretty much every line of business app out there has a data grid at some point, right? So there's three main pillars to this app. Uh, first off, you can view related data. Now this will go out and make just custom Microsoft Graph calls. We're using something called the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. And it'll bring back like related emails to that customer or person or whoever. Um, so that's one aspect. The other aspect is communication. So we're using Azure communication services. You can do things like call directly from the app. So you don't actually, the idea from this came from an AC air conditioning visit I had. They literally had a tablet and they're up in my teeny little attic space. And then they're on the phone like this. And I'm like, you know, you have the tablet. Why not just call from that? It'd be a lot easier. So you could do that. Um, and then it also has AI. So part of the uh, Azure Communication Services part would be I could say like order is delayed, you know, two days or something like that. And then this will go out and use the normal uh, generational, generate the AI, you know, uh, type stuff. And we could do that. Or, you know, maybe your business is very proper. We want to write like, I don't know, Shakespeare or something like that. If I can spell Shakespeare. Now, we'll see, I have no idea what it's gonna do here, but oh, there you go, yeah, hark, we bring the tidings of delay in thy order, <laughs> fair Jane. <laughs> we need the word hark more often, I feel, yeah. Alas. Alas. This is our dramatic reading of This is the dramatic reading of the yeah. co-pilots, we're doing it. Yeah. In fact, I'm just, forget the demo, we'll just, you know. Just do, anyway, we'll play with the, with the AI here, but all right, but that's, that's normal just kind of calling into the models. Now, what happens though, if I have something like this, and I have a company FAQs, which by the way, I generated these using ChatGPT, but uh, when I come on down, you'll notice I have a, how do I handle customer reviews? Um, what should I do if a company requests a refund? Like, what if you wanna bring in that type of custom data from not only this doc, but others? And it could be Markdown, it could be Word docs, it could be Excel, it could be a lot of different formats. PDF uh, is another one. So if I go on back, you'll notice this little uh, icon right up here, and my typing's so bad, I just went ahead and hard-coded it. <laughs> um, but how should I handle a company refund request? Well, the LLM's not gonna know how to do this, right? This is something that we have to give it some more context. And so what will happen here is, this is actually gonna use the new uh, Azure AI search capability. Go search through some documents, and I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a moment to wrap up here. Bring back those fragments, and then feed those into the prompt, and then the LLM can do its uh, job there. Okay, so if we do this, this is pretty much what you'll see with like Copilot for Microsoft 365 and others, and you'll see if a company requests a refund or wish they return a product, blah, 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 and then you could actually link to the doc right here, you'll notice. Now I could also, I have another doc in here about, because everybody wants to know how to install a clock from scratch, I'm sure. So, you know, how do I install a clock? Not that you would look it up, but how many have manuals you've ever searched through? And you're trying to find that one thing in the manual and you're just like, I know it's here somewhere. I mean, think of your car manual, you know? Now this gives me all the instructions and this is also from, uh, in this case it's a Word doc. Uh, that's there. Now, to do that type of thing is actually pretty straightforward. Now, there's two things I did. The first is I'm just using GPT-3.5 Turbo. Right tool for the right job. I didn't need GPT-4 capabilities. This one's perfect for this. Um, but you'll notice I'm also using text embedding ADA. And this is an embeddings model. Now, embeddings lead to the vectors which get you to the semantic similarities where you can type like holiday, like Bob mentioned, and find you know, gingerbread or something like that house. So that's the first thing I did as I set that up. Now, if I go into the chat playground here, and I do wanna point out that you might have seen some uh, other demos, there's a new preview of this coming out, but all this functionality is still there. Notice I can add my own data. Now this is kind of the awesome sauce. It's very easy to work with. So if I hit add data source here, in fact, uh, some of this is brand new as of like two days ago. So you can do Azure AI search, that's new. Mm -hmm. uh, blob storage, that's been there for a little bit now. Cosmos DB for MongoDB, that's new. Mm -hmm. um, you can even now, and this is also new, give it a web address mm -hmm. and have it kind of pull in that information so that you can use Copilot against that data. Now, 
I started by just doing upload files. And what that, all that does is it helps you create your blob storage and it helps you create your AI search, your cognitive search, um, since we're still trans transitioning to the new names. So I'm gonna go to just blob storage here and you'll notice it already selected mine. Uh, I already have a storage container, all right? And if I go down, I, there's my AI search, okay? Now with AI search, you're gonna see in a moment, we can do something pretty cool. Now I'm just gonna give it like my index because I already have one. How often do I want it to index? Once, hourly, daily? Once could be interesting. Yeah. Like once and then the data is just stale from then on, I guess, I don't know, do but anyway. Minutely. But I'm gonna go to add vector search. And this is why I showed you earlier, I had the uh, ADA model. All right, so if you haven't done that before, you need to add that model, otherwise nothing happens with the dropdown uh, because it wouldn't know how to generate the vectors to do the semantic type stuff. Now you acknowledge, and then there's really just one more thing here. Now this is super cool. So vector is super powerful. I mean, that's what LLMs are using behind the scenes. They generate what's called embeddings with vectors, which is really just a bunch of number arrays. And then uh, that can be used to find like similarities in things, semantically similar. But notice there's also vector plus keyword. Well, that was like, ooh, that's even better because sometimes you're typing a very specific product and it's just, it's a very specific value. Well, keyword works great for those type of things. Okay, the problem is if you do just those two, sometimes you'll get results that aren't quite what you expected. It might not rank things exactly like you wanted. So notice down here, this hybrid plus semantic. Now you might go, wait a sec, I thought you said the vector thing was semantic and all that, and it is. This is a second process that runs. So it'll go out, bring back the data that matches the keyword and the vector searches. But then it'll do what's called semantic ranking on that so that the user doesn't just get the raw data that came back, they get a more ranked data. Now, from there, I would just hit next and finish. And that's all I did to set this up. Now, I'm just gonna show you one quick thing. Once you set that up, you could actually play in the playground right there. Three minutes. But let me uh, show you this, and then we'll wrap up. So, you'll notice the code here. We have chat GPT, all right? I have some tokens, temperature, messages, and that's the part I wanna show you. That's how I actually call and integrate it with the LLM is I just add that little bit of code right there to call cognitive search. Now we'll have a link here at the end. I'm gonna turn it back over to Donna where you can actually get to all this code. It's yep. uh, up there. So Donna, take it away. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you, Dan. That was an awesome demo. I loved it. So there are real customers doing this out there. Maybe your company is too. One company who I have loved working with recently is the University of Surrey in the UK, and they've actually done this. They had two data sources. One was like an ancient Drupal website from like the 90s, and the other one was like a modern dynamics system. So they were able to pull the data from both and build a custom LLM to be an accommodations assistant for their students. So students need, didn't need to file a ticket for laptops or any sort of accommodations and wait two days for some support person to come back to them. So people are really enjoying this just in the world. But they were fantastic people. If you want to take a picture, get in touch with them. They know that they're being talked about here at Ignite. So thank you, University of Surrey, for volunteering your case study. So there are five trends that we'd love to share with you that are coming up in 2024. Dan, what do you think? Well, I think you're all seeing the first one there. Mm -hmm. um, large language models are mm -hmm. everywhere. everywhere. And you know, we just announced some new ones, uh, mm -hmm. five for example, mm -hmm. um, this week. So I think uh, having a good understanding about what's available, especially for your target industry, right. that's gonna be a big one. Right. Um, on the next one though, we just talked about multiple mm -hmm. data sources. Right. Um, so many. This is going to be all the trend for next year, your own data and different data sources. Yeah, and then from there, obviously, uh, April, for example, showed uh, prompt libraries. Mm -hmm. And I think you're going to see more and more of these where sometimes it, you just need that little spark to mm -hmm. get you started on, hey, what's possible here? And so I think you're going to see more and more of that, and there'll be a lot of learning we can all do yeah, there. Yeah, so much upskilling. And then a thing you're going to start seeing is you're, we're going to be willing to let AI act as our agents and take action for us. We've done this. If any of you have bought something from eBay, you've already set like the max price the little bot can go up to. So it doesn't bid all at once. It bids like in $50 chunks, right? So you're going to see more of that, like bring me flight options, bring me write, draft my emails. So 
AI will act as an agent. And the last one, and this is really important, it's growth mindset. We have to stay flexible because everything we know today could be completely wrong. So quickly take a picture of this. This is an assessment of where you're at today, okay? Just mark where you're at today on this level, and in a year, look at how far you've come. And if you need help with this, I'm, we're working with a fantastic partner in the UK called ANS. They built an assessment uh, program for you, for Ignite. So you can take a picture of this. There's an AKA link, aka.ms, co-pilot benchmark, if you'd like to sign up and do an assessment of your company to see where you're at. But because it's us, and there's always homework, please do take a picture of this. We actually did do a dramatic writing of the co-pilots at this URL, aka.ms, Microsoft co-pilots. And if you'd like to stay with us, go to this LinkedIn group called aka.ms LI Copilot Crew, where we will be dropping all the latest and greatest of Copilot news. And we'll be keeping these resources up to date weekly. And we mean weekly, because we have updated that site. <laughs> every day so far. Every day so far <laughs> since we built it. So thank you so much for being with us. Please go forth, do the thing. And we can't wait to see what you build. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>